Welcome back. We are going to look at some multiple choice today. So we are going to do some practice multiple choice questions. And as we do these practice questions, we'll bring them up. Um, we'll give you a chance to you know, attempt them on your own, and then I'll explain the answer to you. Now, good news. The multiple choice questions can be found online. These are released items. And uh, if you just go to Google and type in Social Studies 30-1 2016 released items, you can come to the same page as me. And then we can work through them together. So not all of these questions will be pertinent to the economic unit that we've done. So we'll do the economic ones together. And then we'll come back and we'll do the political and the contemporary world and Cold War ones at a later date. So the exam itself has 17 released items. These are items that will no longer be on a future diploma exam, but were once on a diploma exam. So they show you the type of rigor and style that you may see on your diploma coming up. So the first one looks like it's based upon politics, so we might skip that for now. Definitely five to seven are based upon MLAs and the electoral system, so we'll skip that for now. And eight, nine, and 10 also appear to be political in nature. So these ones may be related to RI1, so we can take a look at that. 14 to 17 are definitely economic questions, so we can do those together. So let's take a look to see if 11 to 13 are RI1. Otherwise, we only have the one set for economics. So 11 to 17. So number 11, considering the information in both sources, the dilemma most directly faced by democracies. So again, I'm thinking we're going to want to keep that set for after our political systems unit. So we only have the one set to work on for economics, and it is good to have the questions and the answers here. So we're going to look at the questions first, and, and then we'll go and look at the sources. I probably should have had two windows open, so I could just flip back and forth from the um, questions and the sources, because they have them in separate sections of the document, but um, we'll work through it like this this time and we'll fix it for next time. Proposal 1 most directly focuses on the concept. So look, I'm going to read the question first, I'm going to consider the answers, and then I'm going to go in and look for, in this case, just Proposal 1. Proposal 1 most directly. So some of them, more than one is directly focuses on the concept, but what is it most directly? Which of these does it most directly on, focus on? So there may be nuances of more than one of these concepts, but which one is the most directly focus of proposal one? Is it socialism? So I'm going to pause and I'm going to think about that. Okay, what is socialism? So socialism is collectivism. It's uh, you know collective responsibility. It's common good. It's a left-wing economic system. Progressivism. So I'm going to pause and think about that term. Progressivism is, you know, I associate it with the turn of the 20th century and Teddy Roosevelt, but it doesn't have to be the progressive era. As a term, progressivism means pro-change, um, individual rights. So now I'm just trying to also distinguish between them. Is individual rights different enough from the others uh, that I think that, you know, I, I wouldn't be caught up? So are individual rights connected to progressivism? Of, of course they are. During the progressive era, we were trying to accomplish uh, the promotion of individual rights, but at the same time, they don't, they don't mean the same thing. Collective identity. Okay, I think I have all four in my mind. Socialism, progressivism, individual rights, and collective identity. Now I'm going to go back to proposal one. Defend and preserve the French culture language, religion, and institutions in Quebec. So that's the proposal of the program of the Union Nationale. Union Nationale, political party formed in Quebec. 
1936, these are their proposals, and this proposal matches up with socialism, defend and preserve the French culture, language, religion, institutions in Quebec. If it was socialism, I would be seeing something about the economic redistribution of wealth. Uh, I don't see any of that, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cross socialism off. Socialism gets crossed off. Then next up, could it be progressivism? Progressivism, pro-change, right? Defend and preserve. So we're preserving something that already exists. We're not, we're not moving in a, in a new direction. We're not progressing. It's about tradition, right? Defend and preserve something. So although it may be a progressive attitude to be doing this, um, if, if you know they hadn't done this before, but being that the language says defend and preserve something that already is there, that seems more um, embraced in traditionalism, conservatism, right? So I'm going to cross that one out. Oops, don't want to look at the answer. Um, individual rights. So individual rights or collective identity. That's what I have it narrowed down to. Defend and preserve the French culture. So we do have cultural rights. We have language rights. We have religious rights. But we're talking about a group here. And in combination, culture, language, religion, and these institutions like the Catholic Church, that's going to be your identity. So for proposal one, question 14, I'm going to go D. So write, write the D down. I, I guess, sorry, I, I forgot to tell you. Attempt the question on your own first, <laughs> and, and then and then we can see if, if you get the same answer I do. But I ended up going with D on that. Let's go to number 12, and by 12 I mean 15. Trade union activists. Okay, so getting rid of everything about the whole, you know, Proposal one and what they focus on. Now we're changing the question up. We're saying trade union activists would support two things, two proposals. Proposal three and something else. One, two, five, or six. So trade union activists likes two of them. Which two? That's a matching game. So we got to think of trade union activists. This is going to be focused on the economics of it. They're going to be focusing on you know, um, you know what what's good for the workers. You know, trade unionists are, you know, they're into collective bargaining and all those great things. So question number 15, trade unionists. Again, this one doesn't seem economic. Challenge the English capitalist control of Quebec industries and natural resources. Well, there is, there is definitely a, a link to economics there. Improve, well, we already know Proposal 3 was one of them, right? So this gives us an insight into what trade unionists want. Improve the standard of living of French Canadians by raising wages, regulating hours. Yeah, that one screams trade unionists. That's why they kept that one in, I guess. Too obvious. Uh, remove the corrupt and efficient wasteful government. Collaborate with the church and eliminate communists. Increase the rights and power of the provincial government. So... Those are our options. Let's go back to the question. Oops. A trade unionist would likely have most supportive of Proposal 3 and kind of like that one about not liking capitalists. So challenge the English capitalist control, right? Challenge the capitalist control so that the workers can have more control. Um, I'm going to go with Proposal 2, which happens to be B. So D and B. So we had D for that one, B for that one. And again, hopefully you're trying these on your own before I announce the answer. Which of the following proposals would be most likely to hinder efforts to eliminate the inefficient and wasteful government? So you have an inefficient and wasteful government. Which of the following proposals would be most likely to hinder eliminating that. So there's one of these proposals, if we do it, it's actually going to get in the way of another proposal. So proposal four is let's get, let's eliminate inefficient and wasteful government, but one of the other proposals is going to get in the way of that. One, two, 
five or six. One, two, five, or six. So let's jump up there and look at them. One, two, five, or six. So let's look at six. One, two, five, and six. Increase the rights and power of the provincial government to achieve the previously stated goals. Yeah, right? That one jumps off the page. This is going to get in the way of reducing the power of government because right here it says increase the power of government. Let's go back to the question and make sure it's not that easy, right? So proposal six says increase the rights and power of the provincial government to achieve the previously stated goals. Seems like that's the one I think fits. Going back to the question, which of the following proposals would be most likely to hinder efforts to eliminate the inefficient and wasteful government? Yeah, that's it because um, you're making government more powerful. So um, it's going to be more difficult to eliminate the inefficient and wasteful government if you're also increasing power of government. Uh, considering together, these proposals suggest that a major goal of the Union Nationale was to reduce the role of government in Quebec. Huh. Well, not with that last proposal, right? Encourage investment in the Quebec economy. Huh. Investment by capitalists? The second proposal was anti-capitalist. Ensure that the Quebecois become politically active. Hmm. Well, they, they do want to channel that activity, but for a purpose, right? Weaken influence is threatening Quebecois society. They want to weaken capitalism. They want to weaken anglophones. They want to weak corrupt government. They want to weak, weaken influences that are threatening Quebecois society. D is our answer. So we went with D. And then, I can't remember which one we picked here. Um, oh, yeah, it was proposal to B. So D. B, D, D. That that that's a lot of Ds. D B D D. Uh, let's see if we would be the right answers. Uh, D B D D. Okay, good. So again, um, we'll do this with more released multiple choice that are economic in nature. Um, next time, I'll make it more clear that I want you to attempt the questions on your own, and then check in with me and see if we can explain them together. All right, so that's our first of maybe many of these practice multiple choice sessions together.